I guess after you know, being able to sort of match what you can do in movies is to tackle characters. Because I think even in films, you know, there's there's definitely some there's this something called the uncanny valley where CG models don't look quite real. You know, there's something in the mouth or the eyes or something that doesn't quite that gives away that it's not a real you know film person. And I think that's because the human mind is very attuned to understanding faces. You know, that's how we operate through the world. And we know when something's not a human face, you know, much more easily than we know whether a car is real or not if we're looking at it. You know, and I think that's part of the problem with CG is that you have to have you know human heads and faces that look totally real. So the solution in our in our in our minds has been to really capture uh, people and to use that as a basis for for rendering. So. Rather than putting, yeah, you know, and they do that to some degree. And things like Beowulf, you know, they put a bunch of points on people's faces, and you're essentially with motion capture, you're driving, uh, you know, a body or a face. So the light stage is a technology that we're, I mean, we're announcing today, essentially, that we're, uh, you know, it was developed at USC years ago. It was developed by Paul Debevic and Tim Hawkins, and and Paul is well known for, I guess, being the the, the person that I guess created bullet time for the Matrix, um, you know, with John Gaeta and. and you know, and obviously it's a pretty big deal for filmmaking. He also really brought high dynamic range rendering into the computer world, and, and, and a lot of the work we're doing is based on that. So, you know, it was very exciting to, to work with these guys, and I, I finally uh, decided to just go license the technology from USC and, you know, make commercialize it and put it, in, put it out there for, for us to use for our projects, but also you know, bring it out there for video games and movies. And the, so here you're seeing what, what an artist has created essentially for me, where, you know, we have, um, you know, a, a 3D model of the, of the head. And this is what the normals, the rainbow colors represent the, the surface details. Mm -hmm. What the light stage does is, it's not having an artist build that head. Uh, you just put a, you just put somebody in essentially a hol holodeck, right? Or a, the, the reverse of a holodeck, it's a holodeck recorder, right? So if you wanted to make content for the holodeck, this is what you would use. You uh, you essentially have a, a, a person sitting inside of a, a, a sphere or a dome, and uh, they just do whatever they do, and it records it from every angle with, with perfect precision, uh, and it's all optical. They don't have to put any dots on their faces, they just, you know, or makeup or anything, they just essentially sit down and, and, and or, or walk around and do their thing. And this is showing the equivalent of, of what I showed you before. This is the, the, you know, the directional vectors on the skin. And the interesting thing is that it can be done as a person's moved doing their moves. So you essentially get a CG model like this that's fully and perfectly matching what the real person's doing. And instead of capturing 100 dots, you're capturing, uh, you know, essentially what, 16 million points or whatever with, with a 4K by 4K so, camera. So that, that's working because yeah. the light source is a fixed point that you, that you know. Is that right? Oh no, it's, it's interesting. It, it, it can do any light source. It's, it's, as I said, the reason I sort of refer to the holodeck, I mean, I look at this data set, and this is only a small, this is only a small section of the data, right? Just the normals. Okay. There's a lot more that, there's a lot more that essentially gives you what a hologram, I guess, essentially does, is that, you know, you, you essentially get a function for every possible way that light enters and exits from this, you know, from whatever's captured on the light stage. That's a lot of data, and that's why, even though the light stage has been around, uh, you know, for a long time, it's not easy to use because of the massive amounts of data that comes from it. And, uh, you know, and, and the more detailed you get, I mean, the, you know, the bigger that data gets, it's exponential. So the, the results of that are really, really, really interesting. If you get the data and you can find a way to compress it and render it, what you get is something that looks absolutely real. And this way, Radice is not a photo, it's basically using, I mean, that's rendered with, with arbitrary lighting, right? I mean, that's this light probe being applied to that CG head. And this is, so this is essentially a rendered head that looks completely real. And the data set for it is coming from the light stage using all the layers. And, you know, if we're doing this for a game using an existing engine, we can just save the normal maps and and, uh, and give approximations to that. But the light stage, if you take it all the way, can give you perfect re representations of any object you put in it in motion. And uh, and those are, th this was the light stage from years ago. So, that, you know, we were using the light stage on one of our Transformers clips to basically have a laser beam. It was one of the Transformers that's walking across the head. So this is one of the clips that we, about half the clips that we did for the movie were, were you know, for the ads were done in real time. So where we just you know, got to experiment and play around a little bit more. So in this case, I decided to do it in real time, even direct it in real time, and have the um, character walk on a light stage hand in real time. So that we didn't photograph a hand and we didn't build it, we, we light staged it. And you already see you can change the lighting on it, you can look at it from any angle. And 
you know, unlike the human head I showed you earlier, the lights now and the shadows can be local. So, you know, essentially you can put a spotlight up somebody's nose or a laser beak can be, you can have a pen light on him and he can cast a shadow on the head and you get the full relighting. And that's really cool. I mean, that essentially makes the light stage data no different than any 3D model you can put in there. So it has all the flexibility of a 3D model, but it, it's real. It looks real and it can be relit and it's, you know, it can be deformed as well. I mean, that's the next stage we're working on is being able to capture, you know, light stage models and then apply other people's uh, motions or, uh, or faces to them. And I think that, so this is a SIGGRAPH video from 2006 showing, you know, a light stage that was essentially built to experiment with, with much bigger data sets. So this is a full, this is a human in the light stage and this is a CG version of that same person. And you see the CG person looks really good. I mean, it's, it's, it, it looks the same as the, as the video of the guy in the light stage. And this is the actual light stage, light stage six in Rooney Del Rey. And uh, all these LED lights around it are actually not all on at the same time. But what's happening is that there's high-speed cameras that are capturing this, uh, you know, this character on the light stage. And and uh, the, those lights are flashing on and off so quickly that they all look like they're on the same time. But if you can see, slow down the high-speed cameras, you'll see that you're actually just getting, you know, one, really one pattern of lights, you know, thousands of times a second. And from that, we're able to recreate a full 3D, you know, version and re reliable model from that. And that's essentially where the light stage takes us.